What's up, Doombots? Tony Scangili here with a little bit of a story time. I want you to imagine you are a Marvel fan or a gamer or just bored. And you're looking around through a store and you find a game called Marvel Strike Force. You look at it, looks really fun. The reviews somehow are really good. So why not give it a shot? You look at it, you get a couple of minutes of gameplay in, and you go, you know what? I want to find out more about this game. So you enter YouTube, you enter Twitch, I'd say Mixer, but no one's on Mixer, and you do your best to, to find out more information. So you find a streamer, you find content, you go, what should I do? I'm a new player. And every single person, without hesitation, or a moment's notice says, oh, just farm the defenders. And then proceed to give you all of the reasons why you should farm the defenders. These reasons tend to sound like good in arena, help you in early raids, phenomenal for the gold challenge and the block party challenge, things you have no idea what they are at this point. And you go, Okay, every single person who's telling me the same thing, I'm going to work on the defenders. And then three, four, five months pass, and you'll have some success in Arena until, oh man, someone just unlocked Star Lord. Not a whale, just some player. Okay. Well, maybe I'll start working on them now. The Guardians are a really good team, I hear. You've got some reps under you, you kind of know what you're doing, but you're still working on those defenders. I finally got Star Lord. Well, those guys got Magneto now. Oh, well, I guess it's fine. I can I can work towards Magneto now. I'm a little bit behind, but I'm free to play, or I'm a very casual spender. I don't want to get caught up, and that's just the way the game plays. Uh, until you finally get Magneto, and all of those people have Ultron. And we are now nine, maybe ten months into the game, and you are done. But thankfully, because you're playing this game, because you listen to everybody, because you farm the defenders, you can get orange ability materials, which you can only put in your defenders at this point, because they're the only team strong enough that it would even matter. That's what we're talking about. We're done with the defenders, guys. We're just done with them. There is not a single piece of content that requires the defenders in this game. There are parts of content that might require the defenders, but nothing the defenders specifically do are required for anything in this game. And we'll go into that a little bit later. Tony, if we're not telling new players to farm the defenders, what are we telling them? What crazy nonsense are you going to spew now? Well, for the past three months, I've been telling people who come to my stream, come from you from YouTube, and ask me for advice, what should I do? I ask, how long have you been playing? Week, two weeks, month. Stop whatever you're doing. Stop farming defenders. Immediately. Arena store, buy Drax every time. Keep opening, keep ripping open your Blitz Orbs. Don't farm any single character in the Blitz store. Farm Yondu immediately. And if you're in the Raid store and you see a rocket, you buy it. Otherwise, buy one Raid Orb. Repeat the process every time you can. Groot's farmable very early. Nexus... 2-6, maybe? I should probably look that up. I'll put it here. All of the characters... The Guardians of the Galaxy and the Ravagers, all the characters that unlock Star Wars, one of, if not the most high impact legendaries in the game, are very accessible early, very easy to come by. And no matter when you start the game, and no matter how soon a Star Wars event is coming, you are never more than one pass of Star Wars away from having him unlocked. Ever. Well, what happens to Arena? As it turns out, the Defenders are a terrible team. 
at any point. The defenders are not great early. It takes quite a bit. They have to start taking purple materials before Iron Fist gets his heal. JJ gains her ability to give everyone energy. Daredevil puts counters on every player. Punisher will not even begin to start counterattacking in the early game. So how do you beat the defenders? Hulk. If you bought an early offer, Venom. Plenty of options. Not hard. And even so, if you are losing a little bit of income in the early game, it's still not particularly hard to get into the top 500 of Arena, which is still going to give you more than enough credits to buy five shards of Drax every day and have a pretty solid core income. Give it about three to six months. That is the maximum amount of time it could possibly take for you to unlock Star Wars. If it takes six months, you definitely will be able to farm up a six star. But if it's three to six months, anywhere in that range, for you to gain access to a Star Wars, you're immediately going to beat anybody who didn't. So you immediately jump an entire arena shard of everybody who just worked on their defenders the entire time. What else is that going to do? Well, uh, the Cosmic Campaign is useless now. Like, you're just going to run through that. You have the Guardians of the Galaxy team. You're done. You don't have to worry about anything. But you also can do a lot of real work in U6. The Defenders are not good in U6 until, again, you start investing in that. So are you supposed to be investing in the Defenders because they're very good? Or are you supposed to be investing in a handful of characters that are amazing at every stage of the game? I'm going to bet that. So we're going to work on the Guardians now. We're going to tell people, get Star Wars as fast as possible. We're going to explain to them, Star Wars comes every 90 days or so. And in order to get him, you hire five characters that are Ravagers or Guardians at five star. Steep investment, you lose a little at the beginning. But... What you gain from getting an early Star Lord, incredible. But what about after? What do you do after? Or at this point where most of the people who went early on Defenders start working on Star Lord because they just missed him. Because they were farming Daredevil. Because they were farming Iron Fist Node. Because they were farming the Punisher node that drops no shards or both of the Jessica Jones nodes instead of just one or getting whatever they can. And because they were specifically buying Luke Cage for some reason, because they really need their defenders up and all of their bio gear and skill gear went into these characters directly. And of course, mystic, because why would you need mystic gear any other time? Well, that's easy. You check what you've done. You check what you've pulled so far. You check if you've gotten lucky in an arbitrary mega orb or if you've opened a premium orb that was right. What did you get? My money is on not Nick Fury because you don't need to farm the Kree. You don't need them for the Cosmic Node anymore. You can access them, but what's Nick Fury going to do for you? Give you a whole bunch of skill characters to work on and a pretty solid defense team when you get Coulson? You don't have Coulson six months into the game. You just don't. You don't have that. That's not that's not a world that exists. You don't have that. Why are you working on Nick Fury? Magneto? Well, maybe. Maybe it's time. Maybe you picked up a bunch of Storm Shards to help you in U6. Oh, wait, you don't have to. You have the Guardians of the Galaxy. Not even Minerva. Not even the BKT. Just the Guardians of the Galaxy. You're, you're doing great in U6. You're fine. You're probably getting a little bit tough on tech gear right now. So what do you farm? Well... It's the Sinister Six now. Again, you can farm anyone, but it's the Sinister Six. You go right into them. As a matter of fact, you can actually farm them with extra energy really early. You get Shocker relatively early. You get Green Goblin relatively early. A villain node. Like, you'll see him. And then you only have to worry about Vulture. At this point, you don't really need to put much more into Drax. He's pretty much past... His prime. You don't need him at six star. You have access to characters like Mantis and Gamora. But either way, you could buy Vulture Shards. You probably have unlocked Rhino because you should still be ripping open Blitz Orbs. So 
It's not much. And what happens when you get them? Not Shuri. Invisible Woman. You get Invisible Woman. Why are we getting Invisible Woman? Because the second you get Invisible Woman, you now have Star Lord, Rocket Raccoon, Invisible Woman, and Gru. I'm willing to say that's probably four of the best five characters you can bring in to Fear the Darkness, including Minerva. Maybe you got lucky and pulled her by now. Maybe you haven't. Fear the Darkness is really hard without her. You've already worked on the Guardians. You're probably going to get a, a six-star Star Lord on his next pass. So enter the, enter the Darkness, or Dark Dimension 1, as it's probably called by now. You'll be able to do that with a team that's way better than the Defenders. With a team that's way more reliable than the Defenders. Work on Sinister Six. Unlock your Invisible Woman. What do you do now? Now that you've done this. Well, you're now in the same boat as anyone else who's played as long as you have. Except instead of having a very strong Defenders team that you can do the block party once every nine years when it comes out. You can do multiple lanes in multiple different raids, including Greek raids. You have access to a decent city team in the Sinister Six. You have their villains. We'll talk about it. You'll have access to a cosmic lane team, the Guardians of the Galaxy. You'll be fine. You'll work it out. I don't think there's any one right answer on what to do after you work on the Guardians of the Galaxy. I think there's plenty of good options. I think based on how whether you spend, whether you're completely free to play, it doesn't matter. I think by the time anyone sees this video, a month, three months, a year down the road, things might have changed. But as long as the Guardians of the Galaxy are as easily accessible as they are, it's very unlikely that they are not going to be the best option at the early game, and it's even more unlikely that the defenders will retake that crown. Now, this is the part in the video where people have either turned off already because they didn't hear me say I'm going to address the other issues at the beginning, or they're yelling at the screen, but Tony, what about Block Party and the Gold Challenge? Well, Let's take a quick look at the gold challenge. Only city allowed. Okay. Well, how do we beat them if we don't have the defenders? Um, and for the record, also only city allowed. Let's find out. Ms. Marvel, phenomenal character. Hands down, amazing character. Spider Miles, Spider Man, Blitz Orb characters. You've definitely unlocked them. Wait a minute, is that already basically a Brawler's team? It is. Look at that, right there. Already a Brawler's team. Ms. Marvel, Miles, Spider-Man. At that point, it's just two other city characters. Did they need to be the Defenders? Nope. Should they have been the Defenders? Nope. At this point, you can bring in Rhino. Like, it doesn't matter. You have city characters. You already have the Sinister Six. You already have heroes. The block party, the final stage, the one that gives you tier four ability materials requires city heroes. I just named three. Let's look at them specifically. One, two, three. What other characters can you bring in there? Doesn't matter. Maybe you have a strong Luke Cage. Cool. Bring Luke Cage in. He's a defender. But you didn't work on him. You just got him. Maybe you, you hedged and took up some Jessica Jones because she's actually a really good character overall. Sure. Maybe you got lucky. Maybe you got a Ghost Rider. Maybe Ghost Rider becomes accessible at this point. Maybe you were leaning right into Night Nurse the entire time. Who knows? Maybe you pulled a daredevil. Any of these things are possible. How strong do they have to be? 
in the process of building an actual Blitz team and good characters, and with Symbiote Spider-Man coming out around the time of this video, probably a better team than it looks like. Like, why are you working on the Defenders? These are easily accomplishable. And that's Block Party. If you work on the Defenders all the way up to 7-star, the only team, especially if you prioritize it, the only team you're going to be able to put those Tier 4s in are the Defenders. And then you're going to end up with a Defenders team with Tier 4s in them. And what's that going to do for you? Now I was showing you the Defenders because I wanted to draw a quick comparison. My Defenders and my Guardians of the Galaxy team are literally the exact same power. Very few differences. I can tell you a couple of things right now. This Guardians of the Galaxy team has two Tier 4s in them. Star-Lord, Groot. Both passives. That's it. I put nothing else in any of these other characters. Drax, Mantis, Rocket, nothing. The Defenders have two sets of Tier 4s in them. The Heal, the Passive, and they're also passives, these two. Two of my Defenders are Gear Tier 13. The best damage dealer, and JJ because I like her. Probably would be better if I brought him up to 13 too, as he is a healer, pretty decent damage dealer. They have very similar red stars. Their powers are relatively close by. Do you want to know the difference between these two teams? Defenders are dog shit. This team wins. Now you might like the defenders, or you might be suffering from confirmation bias. You may have ended up having invested in them and felt really good as you started doing your U5 nodes, and then felt really good as you started doing the inside laden of U6, and then felt really good as your six-star defenders team started putting a little bit of work in on Fear the Darkness. And at that point, you clear Fear the Darkness, and you've spent all of that time. In case you don't know, it is 810 shards to bring a character to seven-star, 510 shards to 6 star. 610 times 5, do the math, that's how many shards went into this team. Even cutting that number in half, you could have a pretty competent Guardians of the Galaxy team that will outperform them shot for shot at the investment. At this investment level, there is more content I can accomplish with this Guardians team than there is with this Defenders team. That's just me. This is a strong team. Don't be someone with a 300k Defenders team complaining about how many new characters are coming out that you're never going to catch up. There was no problem with investing in the Defenders early. It was the right thing to do for a long time because we didn't have to think about it. But like I said, for the last three months, I've been telling people specifically to worry about getting Star-Lord. Two people have received Star-Lord since then. Two will receive on his next pass. Maybe my roommate, who also just started playing this game, will get Star-Lord on his next pass. Depends on when he comes out. We don't know. But if he does... He's going to be a lot better off than any amount of farming he did on the Defenders. So that's it. We're done telling people to farm the Defenders. We're done. We're, we're off it. If someone asks you, what do I work on? Ask them a simple question. How much money do you plan on spending? If the answer is zero, you say Guardians. If the answer is anything, you say Guardians and also buy some fun stuff as it comes out. That's it. There's no reason to work on the Defenders anymore. They're not required for any content. They're not helpful for any content. They're actually detrimental in using characters, and you don't even get Daredevil until he unlocks at 100 shards. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, I'll have a couple more hot takes coming out because I kind of like doing these because there's a lot of content coming out, 
especially from Fox Next, that's giving people bad advice. And for every piece of bad advice that's out there, I'm going to be here trying to counter it with somewhat logical good advice. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli. Thanks for watching.